and welcome. In this video tutorial we will be installing Neo4j onto an Ubuntu virtual machine. This will actually work for any virtualization platform whether it be VMware, VirtualBox, KVM, or AWS or Windows Azure, even Rackspace or Heroku. Uh, basically any virtualization platform that runs Ubuntu or any Debian based distro this install process will work. I'm going to assume that you are already familiar with graph databases, what they are and why you would use them. So we're not going to go ahead and review the introduction and what is a graph. If you would like to later, there's this awesome explanation right here of what is a graph, um, a lot of the basic definitions, and just really good basic information. With that being said, we're going to focus on installing our graph database, which in this case is going to be Neo4j. The first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and get our GPG key and then we need to add it to aptitude. So we're going to just copy this one line little code right here. We're going to come on over here. I'm already secure shelled into my remote virtual machine, which in this case is actually just a vagrant box, but without getting too technical, we're going to go ahead and escalate our privileges to sudo. So we're going to become a super user. And the first thing we're going to do is run that wget command. So we used our wget command line tool, we went to this URL, fetched our GPG key, and now we've added it to apt. So with that being done, we could just go ahead and do apt get update, and then semicolon apt get install neo4j. So in this one line, we're updating aptitude, and then we're telling it after we run our update, we wanna go ahead and look for this new repository called neo4j. Prior to doing that though, I forgot the most important thing. We have to go ahead and create our sources.list.d configuration for Neo4j. To do that, we can just come back over here. We're gonna add Neo4j to apt sources list. And we can just copy this one line right here. This is a beautiful one liner. That's going to echo this line into a file inside Etsy apt sources.list.d and then inside there we're creating a file called neo4j.list which is going to contain this one line of code right here okay so switch back over to our command line tool we're going to paste that in there we've now echoed the statement into this file right here to see that we can just go ahead and cat out our etsy app sources.list.d and then neo4j.list here we are we can see that we have a repository defined, it's a Debian repository, and we want the stable release. Now that we've done that, we can actually go ahead and run our apt-get update, apt-get install Neo4j. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. This will take about a minute or two. It's a great time to get up and grab another cup of coffee, take a potty break, whatever the case may be. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for this to update and install Neo4j. Once it's done though, we're gonna verify that the service is running and then what they left out in this actual tutorial here and the reason why I'm making this video is we're gonna have to edit some of our configuration files and do a few little things so we can access our Neo4j service remotely by default Neo4j is actually locked on down so it can only be connected to you locally it's a best practice as far as security goes but as far as development I need to be able to access our web interface for Neo4j remotely and we'll see all that shortly so let's come over here. We can see that the following new packages will be installed. Neo4j, one will be installed newly, uh, one newly installed. We prepared to unpack it. We processed our triggers and we set up Neo4j. Now Neo4j is running and it should be accessible via HTTP colon slash slash localhost on port 7474. If we wanted to access this locally, that would be working right now. However, since we're secure shelled into this remote machine, like I said, we're going to have to go ahead and edit some configuration files. Clean up my terminal. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change directories into var slash lib slash neo4j. And inside here, you can see we have a couple different directories, one of which is a conf directory. So we're going to change directories into conf. And this will have all of our configuration files. The one we're interested in right now is our neo4j-server.properties. So we're going to copy that. And we're going to go ahead and edit this with any text editor. I'm going to use Vim, but you could just as well use VI, Nano. Oop. Or Kate, Gedit, whatever the case is. 
So like I said, I'm going to use Vim and I'm going to go ahead and edit the neo4j-server.properties configuration file. When we do that, we can see up here at the top, this is the default location for our graph database. This is where it's going to be stored. And here is the line we're most interested in. Our Neo4j server, web server's default address. You know, what do we want it to be able to access by? We want to access it from anywhere. So 0.0.0.0 means we can access it from anywhere. But this line is currently commented out. So we want to go into insert mode. We're going to remove that comment, that hashtag. And now we've removed that. Let's go ahead and take a couple <coughs> seconds to look and see what else we have in here. You can see we have the default HTTP connector, which is accessible on port 7474, as well as our HTTPS connector, which is by default, we have SSL enabled, set to true. And we can see that the SSL web servers HTTPS port is set to 7473. So this is the port we're actually gonna be connecting to when we connect to Neo4j, 7473. So now we can write and quit so we saved our changes, we exited it on out. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and restart our Neo4j service to load in that new configuration file. So we're going to do service Neo4j dash service. And we'll check our status first. We can see that's running. We want to go ahead and restart it to load in that new configuration file. Here it is, we're restarting our graph database. We're waiting for the server to become ready. This only takes a few moments. All right, and now we can see that it is ready. So we loaded in our new configuration file. The next thing you probably will have to do is check your IP tables and actually create a rule for it. So we're gonna do IP tables list. You can see up here, I already have a rule for our port 7473. And just really quick to give you an idea of what that rule looks like, it's IP tables dash capital I so we want to insert a new role and it's going to be an input. We're going to accept input to the, the protocol is going to be TCP dash M. The message is going to be TCP. Our destination port is 7473. That is the port we found in our configuration file for SSL. And then we just do dash J accept. So we're accepting all TCP traffic to this destination port and we're inserting this into the beginning of our IP tables. We don't want to append it, we want to insert it so that way it'll be at the top of the list. You can go ahead and hit enter, that'll apply the new rule. And then you want to go ahead and do IP tables save, IP tables apply, and now that new rule will actually be in effect. So if we come over here to our web browser now, and we're just going to open a new tab. If we go to HTTPS colon slash slash that server's IP, which we can find out by just coming back in here and typing if config, and then the name of the interface. In this case, my interface I'm using is eth1, so ethernet1. And we can see that the internet address is 192.168.56.101. So we'll just copy that real quick. And we want to go ahead and connect to that port of 7473. The first time you come here, you'll see that we have a, you know, the site security certificate is not trusted. When you first install Neo4j, it will automatically go ahead and create a self-signed certificate for your HTTPS traffic. Um, that's just a best practice. Uh, when you actually go into a production environment, you would want to go ahead and use a SSL certificate from a trusted certificate authority, such as, but not limited to, VeriSign. There are several other good CAs on out there that you could use as well. And then you would just go into your configuration file and put in your CA information for that. I'll probably make another video tutorial discussing how to do that later. But for right now, for development purposes, this will work beautifully. So we're going to go ahead and click proceed anyway. And this will go ahead and load us on into our Neo4j web service browser. So now we can see what's going on with Neo4j. If we come over here and click on this up in the top left corner, we can see our node labels our relationship types, and here is the location of the default database, which we saw defined in our configuration. Let's click on our labels. We don't have any labels. We don't have any relationship types. Right now, there is no data in here whatsoever. We can create a new node. We're gonna call it 
we're going to create a new node of n. It's going to have a property, uh, which is the name. That's the key. The value will be Jose J. And we're going to return n. That should work. Well, there's a warning here. Oh, I didn't save it. That's why. Oh, well. So now we have our one property. And it has a name of Jose J. So we can see that Neo4j is in fact working. It's up and running. We're able to access it remotely. And it really is that simple. So now we can go ahead and dive into our development and actually play around and start using our graph database to do wonderful graphing things. So I hope that helps. If you guys have any questions or any comments, feel free to go ahead and post a comment on this video. And I'll be more than glad to help you as much as I can. Thank you very much. And you guys have a great day.